Welcome to Precious Testimonies. I'm Kathleen Rasmussen and today we are going to have a special sister share how God has become real and alive in her life. She is so excited for Jesus and wants to share and I want to share too about this ministry a little bit, what it is based on. It's based on the scripture of Psalms 96, verse 3, where it says to declare God's glory in all the nations and his wonders among all the peoples. And that's what this person, her name is Cynthia Williams, is going to be sharing. She's going to be sharing about God's glory because everything that has happened in her life has been nothing but for His glory. And she's so excited and happy to share what God has done in her life. And she wants everyone to know that He is real and alive. And we just encourage you, if you're just flipping channels and you wonder where you're, where you're, what channel you're on, you're watching a broadcast called Precious Testimonies. And I encourage you not to change channels or to go anywhere else. But if you've got questions about life, your life in general, or maybe you're, you're going through something serious that you don't have answers for, I encourage you to listen. Listen to see what could maybe help you, help direct you in your life. And we know, we know what and who can help and direct you, and that is Jesus Christ himself. So thank you, and we look forward to hearing what Cynthia has to share with us. Thank you, and God bless you. Hi, my name is Cynthia Williams, and I'm here to share my precious testimony of what the Lord God has done in my life. I was born in Louisiana, and my grandmother's name is Hattie Fields. She's the lady that taught me that God was real. Um, she was a pastor's wife, and my grandfather, Big Daddy, was a preacher. And she would walk me to church every Sunday on that dirt road. And I always felt so privileged to walk with her because she was so pretty. I, I, I loved her. Um, she was 96, and she passed this year, 2011 and she's resting with the Lord. What I love about what she did is every Sunday we'd, I'd sit next to her at church and she'd give me a piece of gum. She said, now you be a good girl and you sit still. And I said, yes ma'am. And so I would sit still and listen to my grandfather, Big Daddy, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I was just amazed how when the people would come in the church that you would see them and and then after a while, when God would show up, everybody was beautiful. I, I just love when God showed up, even as a child in the church, because there was so much love and so much joy. And it was like, wow, this is wonderful. We're all loving each other. And, and so growing up, having that experience, having my grandmother teach me that God is our source and he's the Lord put our trust in the Lord um, that was planted in my heart at a young age that the Lord Jesus Christ is the way he is the only Savior that there is and so I, I thank God for that my mother came to Michigan in 1967 as a little girl I think I was seven or eight years old and we lived in the projects um, <laughs> Growing up in the projects, we had my mom had six kids. I'm the oldest of six. And so being the oldest child, I had a lot of responsibility, washing dishes, keeping the house clean, giving my brothers and sisters a bath, um, just doing whatever my mother told me to do. Because my grandmother says, now you do whatever your, your mother tells you to do. You follow directions. I said, yes, ma'am. And so I just thank God for that. Um, my mother, I love her very much. I love all my brothers and my sister. So growing up in the projects, um, I, we went to Macedonia Church, and I thank God for those years. Um, one Sunday I went to church, and I couldn't see over, 
I got to church first of all I got to church late and I couldn't see over everyone's shoulder so I sat and, um, and I just decided I was going to just listen because I couldn't see I was only uh, about 10 or 11 years old when I went to church and, and my mom she didn't go so I just decided to listen to the pastor and he was preaching the word and I started listening and he said you need Jesus you need Jesus to make it you can't make it without Jesus and I said oh I need Jesus I'm going to go up front because I can't make it without Jesus and I need him so at 10 or 11 years old I got up went up front nobody made me do it I, I needed Jesus, I wanted Jesus, and I got baptized. I received Christ at a young age. And I can remember that whole day having so much peace and so much love. I said, wow, this is wonderful. The love was so strong and the peace of God. And I can remember one of my aunts, she said, I can see you're very happy. I said, yes, I am. I'm very happy. So growing up, I trusted the Lord God at a young age and then um, going through elementary school junior high and high school my high school years um, those years of uh, there were very um, a lot of peer pressure peer pressure and so I strayed from the Lord and uh, became promiscuous um, being sexually active, shouldn't have done that. Um, then, um, then graduating from high school, I also had a son. I had a son when I was 17 years old. Um, and that really hurt my mom. That really hurt her. Um, her trying to raise six kids by herself and, and then me getting pregnant at 17, it, it really devastated her. Um, and then going to church and um, still going to church pregnant and 17 years old that really caused a lot of stress in the family but the Lord brought my mother through that um, um, breakdown um, and he restored her back and I thank him for that and then um, what happened then was in my life I um, started going to parties started going to clubs <laughs> 18, 19, 20, 21, clubbing, going to the clubs, Mr. President's, Lansing, um, dancing, having fun, me and my cousins. And then what I noticed in my life, I st certain people were attracted to me that I felt like I shouldn't have been hanging with. And um, I lis didn't listen to my conscience. I, my conscience said, nope, you shouldn't go that way. No, you shouldn't date that person. No, you shouldn't do that. No, you was wrong for that. And I, my conscience, I was like, well, I said, okay, my conscience is bothering me. I took note of that. And then I started having dreams. I had this dream, and it was very vivid. I think I was 20, 22 at the time. A dream. I was laying in bed. I'll never forget it as long as I live. It was in living color. As I lay there, I seen a young lady walking down the street in a white dress. And I'm thinking, wow, she's, this street is really dark and she's walking down the street in a white dress. And I thought, wow, it is dark. And all of a sudden, some people jumped out of the dark and beat her up. And I'm laying there dreaming and looking at this dream. And, and she's laying on the ground in a white dress after being beaten up. And I woke up. I said, oh my God, why did I have that dream? I said, God, why did I have that dream? And why was it so vivid? Why was it so real? I've never had a dream that vivid in my whole life. And I started talking to God. I said, well, it won't be me. I'm not going to walk down a dark road <laughs> in a white dress. Just going to make sure I don't do that because I don't want to get beaten up. So at that time in my life, I was working at a job and I was trying to make a living for myself. I was 21 or 22 years old. And I found a job 
and they let me go. And so I had left a job to go to that job. And so the man let us go at the 89th day and I had bills to pay. And I was very angry. And I fell into like a crisis, a depression, because I, I thought that I would keep the job. And then at that time, I was fighting with my boyfriend on top of that. Lost my job. My mother's upset with me because it's time for me to grow up. I'm not a little girl anymore. It's time to grow up. You're not 15 or 16 years old now. And so I'm going to the club. Lost a job. My boyfriend and I are fighting. And so I decided, okay, one day I was just roam at home. And I decided I was looking for some pickles. And so I went into my mother's room because she would hide the pickles. And I looked behind the dresser. I said, oh, there's the pickles. She always hiding them. And I said, oh, my God, there's an envelope full of money. And the devil said, take that. Take that money and you can move out. I said, oh, God. Yeah, I can move out. <laughs> I can move out. I can take this money and move out. Me and my boyfriend. Or me and this guy that I was liking that I shouldn't have been liking. And so I took the money. I was wrong. Took the money, called the boyfriend, said, hey, I got some money. We can move out together. He said, okay. All right, I'll... I'll get with you and we'll get together at the club. So, okay, holding on to the money. My friend Michelle, she calls me. She says, hey, let's go out tonight. But before we go out, let's go shopping. I said, okay, let's go shopping. I said, yeah, we, I got a couple extra dollars and go shopping. So we're at the store. And she said, well, let's, let's, let's buy these dresses. They're white. And um, let's, let's, let's get these mini dresses. And she said, I'm going to get this one. And I said, okay, I'm going to get one too. I'm going to get this white one. And it was, there were many dresses. They come up over the knees. I said, yeah, we're going to go out. We have a good time. Got nice, cute little dresses. And so I'll meet him, the boyfriend, at the club. Give him the money. So I, um, instead of me giving him the money at the club, he called me and said, no, just meet me at my house and give it to me. So I went over his house. And I said, he said, where's the money? And I said, right here. And he took the money and he pushed me and he said now get out and I was devastated I had never been hit in my chest and someone took my money and told me to get out and I cried I cried as I walked down the streets tears came into my eyes and someone asked me what was wrong and I didn't answer him so I decided, I said, I'm going to go to Kalamazoo. So I got on the bus just to leave Battle Creek because I just wanted to be in another setting. I caught the bus, but while I was on the bus, I was in like a whirlwind. I was in, I was devastated. I mean, I was so hurt and broken. And as I caught the bus, I just didn't know what to do when I got to the bus station, my mind was so out of it. And I saw some children in the bus station. I decided I'm going to sit down on the floor with the kids so I can get myself together. So I sat on the floor with the kids and I just started playing with them. And all of a sudden, it dawned on me, I need to call my son. So I called my son. He said, Mom, come home. Just come home, Mom. Everything's fine. So I caught the bus back home. During this time, um, catching the bus home, I called Michelle and she said we were going to go out. So I got with her. We went to the El Grado Lounge. And then after we left the club, I went over to this guy's house. And I was like angry. I said, now why would you, t I said, why did you take the money and push me out of the house and told me to get out? I was very angry. So I took off my high heel shoes and I threw it at him. And I ran. And when I ran, I had no idea he was right behind me. And so as I'm running, I decided to look back to see where he was at. And when I looked back, he punched me. 
and I flew and I hit the ground. I'll never forget in the middle of the street I laid and I hit the ground and I slid when I hit the ground. And God said, Cynthia. And I said, oh God. The dream came back to me. and I'm at my lowest and I don't want you to see me like this. I was ashamed. And God said, Cynthia. I said, God, I'm going to kill him. He said, no, you're not. You're going to leave town. You're going to be leaving town. And I said, okay. And I got up off the ground, cleaned off my dress. And my sister, she was with me and she she chewed on she chewed him out for hitting me and we got in the car at that time my heart was broken and i couldn't hold my head up and i just threw off the dress and i just laid in the bed with the stockings and everything on i just was so glad to be in bed and i couldn't hold my head up i was broken my sister said, every time I saw you, you couldn't hold your head up. And I said, because I was broken. And I knew that God was with me, though. But I needed to be careful what I did at that time. Because if I had made the wrong move, I could have been destroyed. So... I decided to go for a walk one day and I was walking down West Michigan and I saw Open Door Church, Bishop McCoy's church and I thought about Steve and Chris McCoy going to church, going to high school with them and I thought about how God was in their lives and I thought about my Aunt Mildred going there and I said I'm going to go talk to Bishop McCoy and I'm going to let him know what I've done because I was raised in a Christian family. And I know that a man of God is who you need to talk to when you ever you have a crisis. So I went in the church, and I'll never forget it long as I live. The women that were so kind to me, I said, I'm here to talk to Bishop McCoy. And, he, and they said, sit down, have a seat. And I, and I said, okay. Um, those women were still friends to this day. I thank God for that congregation of women. And every time I tried to get up and leave, they said, nope, you sit down. You're at the right place. And I said, maybe not. And they said, no, you're, you're doing the right thing. Just sit down. And so we, they said, we're going to get him. So Bishop McCoy comes over, and he's sitting at a table, and they said, he's ready for you. You can go talk to him. I said, and I told Bishop McCoy what I did. I said, I stole money from my mother, and I gave it to this guy. And... I'm ashamed of what I've done and I need help. He said, <clears throat> you go home, you apologize to your mother, and you come back tonight and I will pray for you. And I said, yes, sir. I went home. At that time, my Aunt Clara, my grandmother Hattie Fields, my grandfather Big Daddy, Everybody was all in the living room, and I said, oh, my God, i gotta, I got to do this in front of everybody. And I said, okay, because I want to be set free, and I, wanna, I want to live, and I don't want to be destroyed. So I got on my knees in front of my mother, and I said, Mom, I am so sorry for stealing your money. She said, no, you ain't. You ain't sorry. You knew what you was doing. And my my grandmother and my aunt they all sided with me and my mother um, was upset with them and um, so I said I've done it now I can go back to church tonight so I got to you know got ready for church got to church and they was he was preaching the word he was preaching the word and he said he, he was preaching the word of God and after he was finished preaching he said you my girl come here and I got up he said lift up your hands 
And I lift up my hands like this. And he laid hands on me. And in the name of Jesus, he prayed for me. And he cast out every demonic spirit. He came against every evil work of the enemy. He said so much, I don't remember it all. And then he was finished. And I went back to my seat. And I said, oh my God. Everything look new. And I said, I got a new life. Oh, the peace of God, the love of God, the presence of God. I just took note that God, God was in my life, was in me. The Lord God came into me, his spirit. And I said, I'm I gotta go to the bathroom. I gotta go talk to God. So I got up, went to the bathroom. I said, God, you got me. You got me for the rest of my life. I'll serve you. I am totally committed to you. Absolutely, without reservation, you got me for the rest of my life. I'll serve you. No one but you could save me, and you did, and I appreciate you so much. I made my commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ that day, and that's been over 20, that's been 28 years. I went back to my seat. I, I was just so thankful, went home. And I said, he told me I would be leaving town. So let me see how he gonna work this out. So I just kept my head down and just listening and watching. Aunt Clara came into my bed <laughs> and she said, she followed me in there. She said, Cynthia, you can come stay with me. And I said, oh, that's it. He told me I'll be leaving town, I'm, that's it. And so I said, I'm going to wait till she goes back to New Orleans. So she goes back to New Orleans. I, at that time, I wasn't working. So I got my son. He wasn't in school yet at that time. And I got my check. I wasn't working, so I was getting the ADC check. I got that ADC check, cashed it, went to the bus station. My mother took me to the bus station. She said, it's time for you to grow up. You're not a little girl anymore. She gave me that speech. You need the Lord in your life. It's time for you to take on your responsibility and raise your son and be a good mother for him and live for the Lord. And I said, you're right, Mom. You're right. And I got on that bus and I went to New Orleans. As soon as I get to New Orleans, I'm sitting in the living room. Call my mom and I let her know I'm okay. I made it there. And she started giving me the speech again, the same speech. And I listened, always listen. I said, you're right, Mom. It's time for me to grow up. It's time for me to take on my responsibility. I'm not a little girl anymore. I've been sitting there. All of a sudden, I get a knock on the door. And I said, oh, somebody's at the door. I said, Mom, i got to go. And so I go to the door. I said, oh, my God. It's, it's, it's a white boy outside. I said, I wonder what he want. A, a, a white man. He's a man. So I opened the door. I said, hello. May I help you? He said, I'm here. My name is James Paul. I am here to invite you to church. I said, oh, my God. God, you want me to go to an interracial church? I said, I'll do it. I'll do it for you. Because I was part of the busing generation. We were bused from the projects to Urbandale. So, I have, I'll do it for you. Absolutely. I will step out of the comfort zone of a black church, a Baptist church, and I will go where you want me to go. So, my Aunt Clara, she's, I said, Aunt Clara, James Paul is here to invite us to church. And, he, and she said, um, you want to go? I said, yes, I do. So, me and Connie, we went to the Word of Faith church that night. It was a youth assembly. And he held our hands. And he prayed for us, and he cried. And I never, 
I had never experienced that. Someone crying and praying for me, I thought, wow, this is different. I said, wow, God can, God changes hearts. And I thought, man, change my heart. I want to be changed too. I want to be a new creature. And so, him, James Paul, light shining, the love of God in his heart, I desired that too. I wanted my heart to change. I wanted the love of God to be in my heart where I would pray for people, witness to them, pick them up for church. And so, um, we, the next class we went to was called a turning point class. Turning point class. And this is a congreg mixed congregation. We got a black lady on this side and a white guy over on this side. And they want to prophesy to me. They want, it's no accident that you're here. I said, it isn't? They said, no, God planned this. I was like, wow. <sighs> I was just amazed how God orchestrated people to help me, that he cared enough about me that he sent people to help me. And I just was just shocked. And they told me some other good things. And they prayed for me. And I, I said, praise God that I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And so from the Word of Faith Church, at the Word of Faith Church, we had, we had, we had classroom setting. It wasn't like the traditional Baptist church. It was a classroom setting. And so we were, in a, we were like in a classroom and there was a chalkboard. And they put up on the chalkboard, they said, most of your life you've been selfish. You put yourself first, others, and then God. They said, no more. Um, you are going to put God first, others, and yourself last. I said, oh. I have been selfish most of my life, thinking about myself. Like I need to stop doing that. And then the next Sunday we went to church, the, the 11 o'clock service. I had never went to an interracial church where people of all different races are there. And they were lifting their hands and worshiping God with songs of praise. I was like, wow, I want to do that. I have never done that. So I, I started, you know, just lifted him up and the devil said you look stupid why you got your hands up I said I don't look stupid everybody else don't look stupid I said I'm going to go up a little higher I said I want to do what they're doing I lifted up a little higher he said my, and then all of a sudden my arms were like lead I said my, is my arms so heavy I've never felt my arms this way I said I'm going to lift them up higher because this is the devil so I got him up higher then I started singing the songs that they were singing. I said, yeah, I want to praise God too. And just worship and praising Him. And I said, oh, i got to go talk to God. Whew. Praise the Lord. I, and I went to the bathroom. I said, God, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to go up front again. I said, okay, I'll do it for you. I'll do it in front of everybody. I will not be ashamed of you ever again. So, so after he preached a sermon, he called the altar call, Pastor Charles Green in Word of Faith Church. I thank God for him. I got up out of my seat and my feet, it felt like I couldn't walk hardly. I felt like I was walking crazy. The devil was like, you look how stupid you look. But when he came off that stage and he put his hands on me, in the name of Jesus, the, the devil flew. He just took off. And I stood there at the altar. And eternity was there. I said, oh, God. I said, can I come where you are? He said, no. He said, you have a new life, and I need you to learn who you are. I need you to study the word of God. I said, okay, I'll do that. So I get after service is over, I get this cassette, which teaches me the Word of God. He was teaching the Word of God. He said, you have received Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, he that come to me, I will in no wise cast out. He started teaching me that Jesus said, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. 
I listened to that cassette over and over and over. He said, don't depend on your conscience, the things that you've done yesterday. That's gone. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Thank you, Lord. That's Second Corinthians um, chapter. Let me see what book is that. I, I had the scriptures written down, but it's in Corinthians. I really want to get that scripture, but it's in Corinthians. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then he talked about um, believing and and trusting the Lord Jesus Christ. Now that you've made Jesus the Lord of your life. You you walk with him daily. The daily walk with God is what he taught. And I listened. I cherished that cassette and I held on to it. During this time, I started having demonic attacks. The enemy tried to de um, destroy me in my sleep, um, in my dreams. Um, and uh, what I want to say is this, this correct scriptures. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Jesus said, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And then I found out the devil, he, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. I thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you that your word says, it's in Acts, Acts 16.31, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's in Acts 16.31. And Jesus said in St. John 6.44, No man can come to me except the Father draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. So I, the word of God became first place in my life. I changed my thinking. I was I no longer thought the ways of the world, the world's thinking, the world system um, that tries to draw you in. Um, and I was no longer walking according to this world, but I was walking in the Spirit of God, in the Kingdom of God, a whole new life. It amazed me how God could give me a new life in the same body. That is the most awesome miracle. Everything else is second to the new birth to me because I wanted a new life. I was tired of the old person. I wanted to be a, a new. So that cassette, I held on to it. I listened to it day and night. And even though I had demonic attacks um, in my sleep, I would call on Jesus, Jesus save me. And he would wake me up and he would he would be there for me. Um, one time I experienced um, my son, I was carrying him up the steps. It was time for us to go to bed and his face just shone real bright. And I said, oh my God. And I just put his face down like this. And I just walked up the steps. God said, it's okay. I didn't freak out. <laughs> I just put him in the bed and I went to bed. Um, I, I thank God for keeping my mind. I actually I really want people, I really want to say I thank him for keeping my mind, keeping my heart, keeping me during that time. Because when you're coming to God, the enemy doesn't want to lose you. He wants to keep you in depression, in bondage, um, he wants to kill you. He comes. Jesus said, "The thief, the devil, comes to steal, kill, and to destroy." But I have come that you may have life and life more abundant. So I was no longer a child of the devil. I was a child of the Most High God. The Lord God gave me a new birth. I was born again born of the Spirit of God and the Word of God, as Jesus told Nicodemus in the Bible. So at that time in my life, being in New Orleans, um, I kept going to the Word of Faith Church, and this is something that I really appreciate. The, the youth um, 
James Paul and the young people there at the church, it was a mixed congregation. And as African American, they didn't look at my color. When I told them one day we were playing volleyball, and I said, hey, I'm having bad dreams, and I, can you guys pray for me? And she said, yes. She said, hold on, I'll be right back. So she got three or, I think it was like four or five of them, and they pulled me to this room, and they said, lift up your hands. And two of them was on this side, two of them were on that side, and they prayed for me. And I appreciate that. I really did. I really thank God for them. I thank God for the people that love God, that trust God. And so it was time for me to leave New Orleans. And Aunt Clara took me to the bus station. I had my cassette. And I said, Aunt Clara, what is the most important thing I need to remember? She said, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And also I want to say my, my cousin Johnny. Johnny was the first person who gave me the footprints. He, he came and picked me up too. He said, come on, I want you to go with me. And he laid out the footprints on the bed. It was a poem called The Footprints. And he said, read it. And I read it. And I said, Johnny, thank you. I didn't know you knew what I was going through. He said, yes, I do. And I said, thank you. I'll never forget footprints. Um, the Lord is the one that carries, carries us when we're at our lowest. When you see only two set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. And he carried me during that time. And I thank God for my uncle Brady. Brady took me to the Pontchartrain Beach, and Brady spoke the word of God to me. We were sitting on the sitting down, and he said, I, "He said, say, I am not ashamed." And I said, "I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ." And I said, "Of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God, for it is the power of God unto me unto salvation." unto me and to salvation and when he said that those words cut and I felt the power of those words cut all the way through me I said that was powerful I said I'm going to go home and read that scripture and I'm going to study it forever and then I said I want you to baptize me in the Pontchartrain beach and he said no don't worry about that it's okay and he, and he kind of just grabbed me around my arms and carried and walk me to the car. I do appreciate my Uncle Brady. I love my Uncle Brady and I love my cousins, Johnny. So I'm back in Michigan. Come back to Michigan with my cassette, Pastor Charles Green, and a new life in Christ. So I said, now it's time for me to get a job. So I applied for a job at Burger King. So I go to Burger King, young ladies training me. I don't catch on as fast to making the hamburgers, but I try. And so I'm, I'm um, filling up the water bins and, and filling up the ice and um, just learning how to work at Burger King. <laughs> and um, she got upset with me. And I, had, I, I tried really hard, but I, I, I just didn't catch on as fast making the food. And so she, my manager, I, I wasn't aware that people talk to people that way. So she kicked the ice and she um, was disrespectful toward me and, and, it, and it hurt. And my behavior, I didn't handle it very well. Even though she acted the way she did, I didn't have to act the way I did. I was hurt. My feelings was hurt. And so I threw the hamburger bun on the floor and I walked out. And as I walked, I cried, and I said, God, I'm going to need your help to work in the workplace. It's difficult. People don't have patience with people. They say things they shouldn't say, and it hurt my feelings how she talked to me. And so he said, it's going to be okay. So I did, the Lord... Um, let me know that he was with me. 
So I moved out again from my mother's house. Got my own apartment. And um, my friend, one of my friends, she, she wanted me to start going back out to clubs again. I said, no, I'm not going to a club. She said, you're going out of that church. He ain't doing nothing but taking your money. I said, huh. He ain't taking our money. He's teaching us about Jesus. And I'm going to the church, and I don't care what you have to say. So we got in a big argument, and she kicked me out of her car. And it hurt. It was raining. And we got in a big fight. She, she pulled my shirt, and I hit her window with my purse. And next thing I know, I was sitting on the ground crying. I said, God, I'm saved now, and I need to know what you want me to do. Because I love you and I need to know what you want me to do with my life so I start every day just talking to God one day I, I decided to sit in the window in the bathroom so I'm sitting in the window which I love to do and I'm just sitting there I say God what do you want me to do I need a job I'm saved now, but I don't know where to live. I don't know what to do. And the devil's coming to steal, kill, and destroy me. I'm arguing with friends, arguing with my my mother's on me. I don't know what to do. Would you please help me? He says, Cynthia, move to Kalamazoo. I said, Kalamazoo? And he said, he said, yeah. And I got excitement. I, I mean, I got excited when I thought of Kalamazoo. So I said, okay. I'll do that, sir. Caught the bus to Kalamazoo, found a newspaper, so I'm going to find me an apartment. So I said, I'm going to look for an efficiency, something that doesn't cost that much. So I found the paper, found the paper, and I found an apartment on Westnich. And it was roaches and mice. I said, roaches and mice. We got to clean this place. <laughs> so I went to so I went to cleaning it up, and I said, I'm going to dedicate this apartment to you, Father. It's an efficiency apartment. One is two rooms and a bathroom and a kitchen. So I said, Father, I dedicate this apartment to you, to serving you. I danced in the living room. I praised him. I worshiped him. I said, this apartment is dedicated to you to live for Jesus. No, nothing. No partying, no nothing but just to serve you. Okay. And I had God. I said, this is good. I had peace. I had my bed, my dresser, my dishes, my clothes, and my son, Courtney. Found a church near the house. Just decided to just walk in there. Once again, I was the only black person in there. I just sat in the back. And I just listened. And then I, um, I met Willer, um, a man at the, at the library because I would take my Bible on album to the library. And I would put my headphones on and listen to my Bible on album. And then I bought the Bible on cassette. So I had the cassette next to my bed and I had the album at the library. Excuse me. And so every night I will go to the library, put my headphones on, listen to the Word of God, leave there. I had peace. I mean, I had the comforter. I had God. I had peace. I had joy. I was just so thankful that the presence of God was with me. I didn't have a care in the world because God was with me. Even though I had nothing, no material things, I had the Lord. I had peace that you couldn't buy, joy that you can't buy. I had love that you can't buy. I mean, the things that this world can't buy. So the material stuff didn't bother me anymore because God was with me. So I'd go home, lock my door. I was fine. Uh, my son, I got him up for school, took care of him as a single parent. Then I met Willard Bow Jr. at the library, and he invited me to the Church of Christ. Church of Christ. I enjoyed the Church of Christ, Brother Miller. Um, what I love about the, the church, I love going to the congregation where I, have, I met people at the Church of Christ that I'm still friends with 
and that's well over 20, 22 years ago. I'm still friends with them. I love the fact that in God that you can make friends with people and they're friends with you forever, throughout eternity. My friendships are solid. They're real. Um, we pray together. We encourage each other. We don't run from each other when you got a problem. You say, let's pray about it. So I met Evelyn Gray, which I'm still friends with her even now to this day, and other good people. Church of Christ, we, you always read book, chapter, and verse. You read along with the pastor. And I just thank God for that congregation, and I'm still friends with them to this day. Um, walking the church, I met homeless people in Kalamazoo. I had never met homeless people in my life until I moved to Kalamazoo. Um, I met people that were, that were mentally ill, and they would... I had never experienced being away from home, so my experience were very humble, a very humble place. And I thank God for that humble place, because at that humble place, I found out that God comes down to our level. Um, he comes down to where we're at, and we develop a relationship with Him where we can walk with God. It's a relationship that is so precious. Um, when I met people that begged me for money, I gave them money. Um, when I would walk to church, uh, dis um, disabled people, they would ask me, can I go to church with you? I said, sure. Come on, you can go to church with me. Um, Brother Carter walked to church with me and he went into the church, and when they called for an altar call, Brother Carter went up and got saved. He received the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. And everybody in the church, they were commending me, and I said, no, that was God did that. I didn't do anything. He just asked me to come to church, and he came to church, and God is the one who saved him. Um, and then... Uh, I, I did experience some persecution behind it, but it doesn't matter as long as I did what God wanted me to do. Um, Brother Carter got saved. He became the janitor of the church. It changed his life. His life was in, impacted for Jesus Christ. The Lord came into his life, and his life got better. In Kalamazoo, um, God did great things, awesome things for me in Kalamazoo. So many miracles, miracle after miracle after miracle. I mean, divine. <laughs> One time I didn't have any food to eat. Um, we were. It was just before I was to get my food stamps. And I, was, I didn't have any food. That's the truth. A couple times, a few times I can remember. One time in particular, I was at the library listening to the Word of God. And I said, well, God, we don't have anything to eat, but that's okay. Because we'll eat um, in a couple days. So this guy, he saw me, and he was, he just walked up to me and said, hi, my name is so-and-so. And I said, well, hi, it's nice to meet you. And he went to talk, and he says, well, what are you going to eat tonight for dinner? And I said, oh, my God. I said, um. Well, we don't have any food. And he said, well, I got some money. I'll buy you some food. I said, oh, my God. He's going to buy me some food. Should I accept it? And I said, um, well, you don't have to buy us anything. That's okay. He said, no, I, I will go to the grocery store, and I will bring you the food. And I said, okay, if you want to do that, I will let you do that. And so he went and got steaks, and he he really blessed me. Um, he didn't try to attack me or assault me. He wasn't trying to date me. I cooked the dinner and we sat on the floor and ate it. Um, I praise God for those humble beginnings. Um, it's, it really made me appreciate the Lord. Another time when we were low on money, we walked out of the store and we found $10 on the ground. And we picked it up and we ran to Burger King and ate dinner. <laughs> My mom would send me um, 
money sometime in the mail. She, I'd walk to the mailbox and she'd put 20 or $30 in there. I was like, Mom, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I really do appreciate my mother. Um, she's a good mo she's been she was a good mother to me and, and my grandmother and all of my aunts and uncles. I was very fortunate and my grandmother. I was very fortunate to have a good family. I have always appreciated God for blessing me with a good family, Lord. Thank you. And so at the Church of Christ from the Church of Christ, then I, I, I visited another church, uh, Church of God in Christ, and that was right around the corner. And for me, it was to visit other congregation, it was like a taste of heaven on earth because everyone had something to offer. They were like, well, yeah, this is how we do it. And so we would praise the Lord and, and worship Him and the beauty of holiness and just enjoy each other. And, it's nothing like the church. When you go to the church and God shows up, it is heaven on earth. It's just a little taste of what it's going to be like when we leave this world and we're with the Lord. And then I want to say that from the Church of Christ, um, I, I grew in leaps and bounds because I would fall asleep with the Word of God every night. And then I would listen to other teachers teaching me about putting on the whole armor of God. Every morning, I had my radio next to my bed. Charles Stanley's teaching the Word of God this time. And Charles said, before you wake up, before you get up out of the bed, before you, before you put your feet on the floor, you need to pray and put on the whole armor of God. Because you never know what the traps that the enemy has for you. I'll never forget Pastor Charles um, Stanley teaching that that morning I heard that and I every morning I put on the whole armor of God whether it's while I'm laying in bed as I'm getting out of the bed I say father I put on the whole armor of God that I may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil I stand, therefore, having my loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, my feet shrod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, I lift up the shield of faith wherewith I quench every fiery dart the wicked one brings against me. I take the helmet of salvation for my head and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication, watching therein too with all perseverance. The Word of God became life to me. And every night I read Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I say of the Lord, the Lord is my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler, from the noisome pestilence. He covers me with his feathers, and under his wings I trust. His truth is my shield and buckler. Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that stalks in darkness. A thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked, because I have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High in my habitation. There shall no evil befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling, for he gives his angels charge over me. They bear me up in their hands, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I tread upon the lion, the adder, the young lion, the dragon. I trample under feet. And the Lord said, Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? The word of God is life. Because God said, <laughs> in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life and the life was a light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. 
Father, I thank you that your word is true, that you have written your word in my heart and in my mind. I find life in your word. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. No one can take your word away from me or you. I belong to you and you belong to me, and I thank you for that. So from the Church of Christ and then and the Church of God in Christ, I, the Lord blessed me to, I said, Father, it's time for me to get a job. So I went to this employability class at the Goodwill. I always humble myself to God. He, I'm going to stay humble before the Lord. In the Goodwill class, they had an employability class where they would type out your resume. And so she said, put down all of your experiences. And so I put down all of my work experience. And I said, wow, I do have work experience. And I can work. I said, but God, where do you want me to work? I need to work where you want me to work. I want to work on a job that I can make a living and be pleasing to you, to you Father. So, um, I wrote, typed out my resume and I, I, um, I decided I was going to do custodial work because I, at least with court, with Courtney being at home, I could, you know, work at the Goodwill, mopping the floor and then go home to be with my son. I needed somewhere that was close to the house. So I chose that. And then as I was working, they said, mm, you got a lot of work experience. We want to send you to a job because you can work. So they sent me to Proco Sound Factory. Past, um, Proco Sound Factory, right downtown Kalamazoo. Charles Wicks, he owned the company. So I go to Proco Sound Factory. I meet Lindsay, very sweet lady. I liked her from the beginning. She hired me. I said, am I going to be mopping floors? She said, no, you're going to be working on the line. I said, wow, I get to work on the line. That's great. Started out making four twenty-five an hour. I get to the job. I learn how to um, solder. I learn how to cut the wire. I learned my job. I met some really good people, really good people I'm still friends with to this day. Shelly Upson, I love her very much. Cindy, I'm still f good friends to these people to this very day. Um, I could take my Bible to work, my cassette. Um, I noticed that other people was listening to their boom box, so I said I'm going to bring my um, cassette player to work. Pop in my Bible cassette, and I had my headphones. And I said, I'm going to acknowledge God in the workplace. And I'm going to um, live for him. So I put my, put my cassette player in my bag and rode my bike to work. And at work, I just stayed focused on my job. I didn't have a lot of conversations. And when I did have a conversation, I bring up God. And the lady, um, she said, you know, you do an excellent job. She said, the only thing is you talk about God too much. I said, you know what? When you've had... God saved you from death and you almost die. It, it makes you, it changes you, and you're not ashamed of God. And she says, oh, she, I, she respected me for what I had to say. She said that it was okay. She said, you have every right to talk about God. Um, then uh, Shelly and I, for lunch one day, we, uh, she said, come on, Shelly. She said, come on, let's go for a walk. I said, okay. So we're walking down the street at Kalamazoo. And she said, and I said, oh, let's stop. Let's stop right here at this little pond and pray. She says, no, I don't want to pray. I said, come on, we're going to pray. And she said, okay. We sat down. And I said, I'm just going to say thank you. And then you say your thank yous. And she said, okay. So I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you. And then she prayed. And I said, that's all I wanted to do, just say thank you. We felt refreshed, and we made it back to work. To this very day, Shelly, God impacted her life. Shelly teaches a Sunday school class, and she tells her Sunday school class, Cindy, 
made me pray and talk to God and I want you guys to know that that impacted my life to pray I thank God for that testimony that she has that God touched her life through me and so from Proco Sound Factory I, um, I, I stayed there for two years and I got up to like 4 75 an hour started at 4 25 an hour made really good friends um, I mean, really. Um, I bought it, and then I bought a, a truck, uh, um, a, a 1988 truck. I met a really good salesman, Battle Creek Ford. God was just that favor of God on me. He sold me. I was looking for an old raggedy truck. I said, "I want to. Can you sell me a used truck?" He said, "No, we got a 1988 truck for you." <laughs> I was like, "Wow!" Uh, bought me a 1988 blue Ford truck. Um, I did find out people could be jealous. I didn't know. I didn't know. Went to work and I was so happy. And I was like, hey, you guys, I bought a new truck. Are you guys happy for me? I didn't know that people would key your car. And so I went outside and somebody had went along the side of it and keyed it. I was a little disappointed. Um, and But my insurance, they, they paid for it and they fixed it. Um, then the Lord said, I want to increase you. I started feeling like, wow. He started giving me feelings like, you can do better than this. I got something more for you. I was like, oh, okay. I want more. But, you know, I love the people I work with. But I, I, if you want to give me more, sir, I'll take it, sir. And so my mom said, you know what? You're doing all that driving and you love to drive. Why don't you put an application in for the city? They're hiring bus drivers. So I said, okay. Then Willie Spragans, he was like, he said, hey, once you, you know, they're hiring, if you put my name down as a reference, I'll be a reference for you. I said, okay, thank you, Willie. And so I put the application into the city of Battle Creek, typed my resume, put it in, took it to uh, City Hall. At the time, Jim Walker was, Jim Walker was the uh, supervisor. Went to an interview, I'll never forget, sitting in front of his desk. <laughs> he was so nice. He was funny, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> he was a lot of pleasure. He's in heaven now. But I thank God for the years of knowing him. So I went to my interview. And I passed the interview, and I passed <clears throat> the test that we took. And the city called me, and they said, call me in, for, and they said, you're hired. And I had to put in my two-week notice for Proco Sound Factory. And I left there. And then I moved back to Battle Creek. <sighs> Excuse me for crying. And then so, moving back to Battle Creek, I said, Lord, I've got to keep you first place in Battle Creek. Because I know what's in Battle Creek. And so the Lord said, I'm going to be with you. All you got to do is acknowledge me, and I will be there for you. So I moved in with my sister, slept on her floor for a while. I love my sister very much. My sister has been um, off and on the drugs, which is, you know, it's not a secret. So, But I love my sister. I don't care what drugs she does. I love her no matter what. She's unconditionally loved by me. So I started praying for her, laying hands on her, praying for her <laughs> through the years. And um, anyway, um, the Lord, after leaving my sister's house, I got my own apartment and um, continued to acknowledge the Lord. Started driving the bus. When I was driving the bus to the city of Battle Creek, I wanted to make sure that I treated people the way I wanted to be treated. So 
I would always go in the bathroom and I said, God, Father, put love in my heart to love people, to love elderly people, to love homeless people, to love people that are struggling, trying to make it. Bless me to respect them and, 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 and honor them with dignity and respect the way I would want to be treated. I don't want to go to work and mistreat anyone. Just because I'm driving that bus and and I'm transporting them, I want to treat them good. So the Lord did that for me. He, I humbled myself to the Lord and the Lord blessed me to drive the bus and have the patience with people when they're looking for their money when they don't have money, when they're struggling, whether it's through the snow, the rain, where there are children with strollers, women that are struggling to carry and raise children. On the bus, you, you, you're dealing with the community. And when you're dealing with the community, people with, that have no voice, a lot of times people, the working poor, homeless, people that you know, and then there's some. There are a couple of people that, you know, not everyone is homeless, but for the most part, people are trying to find transportation to get where they're going, whether it's to work or wherever they're going. So I, I just thank God for allowing me to serve, driving the bus, having a servant's heart. I wanted my heart to be and submit it to God because that's a big responsibility that's a very very important job where you're driving safely you're transporting people you have to do drive the speed limit you have I have my supervisor that has telling me this is how he wants me to do it the rules and policy of Battle Creek Transit and I thank God for the 20 years it's been 20 years now but through the 20 years, it took the Lord Jesus Christ. I will not want anyone to think that I did that on my own strength because I couldn't have. He helped me to get up early in the morning to make it to work on time. Um, he helped me to to be respectful toward um, my co-workers, my supervisor, and in the community. That's a very important job, and I took it very serious. And as a Christian, I want to be a Christian in the workplace, not just a, a person there that's driving the bus, but a Christian. And during those years of driving the bus, um, the years went by. Um, my youngest sibling was murdered in 1997. That was a very, very painful experience. To experience my brother being shot and killed in Illinois. Um, it was very painful for my mother. It was very painful for all of us. Terry was the youngest child. He was only 27 years old. I always prayed for my siblings that they would receive Jesus Christ, but I couldn't make them do it. I couldn't force them all I could do was present Christ and show them by the way I live that they needed Jesus. Um, the drugs um, in our in our community has destroyed a lot of lives. And I just thank the Lord for his plan of salvation that he can bring anyone out of sin if they are willing to listen and to humble themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether it's drugs, whether it's crime, whatever the problem is, that if we humble ourselves to our Maker, and trust him that God will come down as he has already done in each individual life that God will bring us out 
of sin and out of darkness into his plan that he has for us. And so my brother's death, I didn't blame God. I didn't get mad at God. I didn't. I was praying for my brother. And yes, I was hurt. And yes, I was disappointed. But I'll see him again someday when I go home to be with the Lord. I do pray for his children. Terrence is in prison right now, and I'm praying for Terrence to come out of prison. And Charlie's doing good. But Father, I just want to thank you for bringing me through that pain of Terry's. You know how much we loved him. I thank you for bringing Timmy through prison. Tim did seven years in prison, his twin. Tim's out of prison, and Tim's doing well, driving a cab, and I hope that he surrenders his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I just thank you, Lord, for blessing me to be a Christian after all these years, 20 and 28 years, driving the bus. And I thank you, Lord, for blessing me to... Um, I have to say the blessings now. Let me. I got to continue to say, Stanley Eugene Phillips. Um, the Lord bless me to have another son. I thank God for him. His dad passed in 2006. That was another disappointment that I didn't blame God for. He was on drugs too. He was on the drugs. He wouldn't stop. And I couldn't change him. I can't change anyone. All I can do is change myself and ask God to help me and change and change me. Um, I hope the best for everyone. I hope the best for all human beings, whether they're my family members, my church people in the community. I hope that everyone realize how much they are loved by God. How much the Lord God loves us so much. His love for us is endless, is boundless. But He hates sin. He loves the sinner but he hates the sin and we should hate the sin we should hate the sin that we commit we should repent and that's what I I thank God for the goodness of God the Bible says in Romans 2 4 repentance or do you despise the riches of his goodness forbearance and long suffering not knowing the goodness of God leads us to repent first of all the sinner has to come to God as a sinner the Bible says in Romans 3 13 all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God there is none righteous no not one the Bible says that Adam brought sin into the world. Adam, the first man, he sinned and it brought sin upon all creation. And so we fell in Adam. The Bible is true. It is absolutely true. We're sinners because of Adam. And we have to accept the responsibility that we are sinners. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, as it says in Psalms. And God can handle that. God can handle the sin and the sinner. So I thank God that in His love for us, 
that he planned to bring us back to him. I thank him for that. I thank him and I hope that everyone will humble themselves. I chose the humble road in, in my heart. I choose humility. I was raised to respect authority. I was res raised to respect my elders, my grandparents, my mother. I was raised to respect the law and I was raised to respect God. And I think, I hope that everyone respects God's laws and God's word because the Bible is the word of God. It's not in error. It's not man's word. The Bible is the word of God. And I thank him for his word. And I thank him for the 20 years of driving the bus and someday I'm going to retire from there. And it's because of God that I will be able to retire. And I'm going to give him, I give him all the glory for blessing me to retire someday from driving the bus. Not from life, but just driving the bus. I thank him for that. Through the years I've prayed for people to receive Jesus Christ. Um, I thank God for oh, so many people. Oh, so many. Kathy, Kathy had no arms and no legs. They amputated all of her legs and arms, and I was fortunate to be friends with her before she went home to be with the Lord. I, had, I met so many people. Greg Phillips, I, I went to school with him. I prayed with him. I have so many testimonies of praying with people, well over hundreds. Um, I've been fortunate to buy Bibles. I love the Bible, and I love to put a name on that Bible. And I love to give it to people as a gift because that's what changed my life. What changed my life is the Lord Jesus Christ and His Word. I love the Word of God. I love God with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. I love Him forever. I'll never stop loving Him. And I don't care what man has to say about it because He's my Creator. He's my God. And it doesn't matter what man says. It doesn't matter what the devil says. Because I belong to God and he owns everything. He is the king. And I just praise him for loving me. And he's been so good to me. And I praise him for all that he has planned for throughout eternity. God has great plans for his children. And I thank him for Christian Life Center. I go to the Christian Life Center, Pastor Joel Brooks, excellent pastor. I thank God for all that I've learned. That was in God's plan for my life too. I thank God for, I have to say this, I have great teachers, Kenneth Copeland, Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack sent me, sent me Bible cassettes since 1983, free. I never had to pay a dime. He did my first teaching on spirit, soul, and body, on protection. I thank God for teachers. I am a person that loves teaching because teaching you can ask questions. Teaching you, you, God wants us to ask questions. He wants us to seek Him. He wants us to know. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to seek Him because that's what He wants. And I thank God for the body of Christ where He's given us apostles and prophets, evangelists, teachers, people in the body of Christ for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the, for the teaching of his word. And I thank God for my brothers and sisters all over the world that God has put there for us. I seek them out and I treasure the teaching that I have gotten and I pass it on. So when I got saved, I pass it on to other people because I want other people that are broken, that are lost, that don't know where they're supposed to fit in our society, that don't know who they are, that don't know that God loves them, that don't feel like they're loved, that feel like they're rejected. 
been, been used and abused and mistreated by family, friends, our society to know my testimony what God Almighty did for Cynthia Ann Williams I will never forget what the Lord did for me he did it he's the one that picked me up when I hit the ground in that white dress he's the one that didn't let me die in the car accidents he is the one that gave me my family my friends Bless me to be able to work on a job, to be productive. He's the one that blessed me to go in a community to and work in a work environment where there's lots of people from all cultures and all parts of life that have all kind of experiences that I go into the workplace and I'm able to work side by side with other people and be productive and do a good job and help others and be a blessing in, in my community be a blessing to my family and went back and my, the Lord healed my relationship with my mother my mother and I, our relationship is healed and, and I have a good relationship on my job and in the community it's because of the Lord and I thank Him for blessing me to still be here I'm the Lord, I'm 50 years old. I'm blessed to still be alive. I am blessed. I have classmates. I just went to a funeral. Lois Dean Graham. I loved Lois Dean. I hope she was saved. I have other classmates that have gone on. LaShawn Anderson. I hope to see them when I get to heaven. I have, it's just a lot of people are leaving here right now, and it does make me cry, and it does touch my heart. I hope they know, I hope that they knew Jesus. I hope that they had repented of their sins. I hope that they had asked God into their hearts and in their lives. I hope that they had confessed Christ. I hope that they were born again and and received the Holy Spirit and trusted the Lord Jesus Christ and made that confession to stand before a holy God because the Bible teaches that it is appointed unto man once to die and after death comes the judgment the Bible teaches that man has to leave this world that is reality and reality is that Jesus Christ is Lord and he took the sting out of death and that he is the only savior he is the only way he's not one of the ways he is Lord and there's no other way to get to the father I wouldn't I will not risk not me standing before God and not being saved I would not do that because he's holy he will not change he will not he said I am God and I change not man wavers changes mind but when God says what God says he can't change it he can't change what he has already spoken and he can't lie He's holy. And I can trust him. That when he says, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever live and believe in me shall never die. That's in St. John. God's word is true. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word will never pass away. That's in the Bible. God's word is true. He said he has magnified his word above his name. That's in the Bible. God's word is true. 
I thank him for his word. In Hebrews it says the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividings as under the soul and the spirit and of the joints and the marrows, and is a discerner of the thought and the intent of the heart. I thank you, Lord, that you watch over your word to perform it. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me to receive your word in my heart and in my mind. I thank you for your kingdom, for the kingdom of God. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God. Excuse me, his word is true. Father, I just want to thank you. I want to share a song with you, Psalms 23. This is a song that I used to sing in bed when I lived in Kalamazoo. Um, Debbie Boone. Pat Boone's daughter, she sung it, and I want to share that with you. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies Thou anointest my head with oil My cup runneth over Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and i shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the nights that you were there for me, and every night that you're there for me, that you put me to sleep and you wake me up every morning with brand new mercy. Thank you for being so good to me, Lord. This is another song. Evelyn Gray, my friend that I met in Kalamazoo, that I love very much. She sung this song at the Church of Christ. And this song comforts me at the times when I needed to remember that God loved me. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go why on the cross be lifted up because he loved me so he loved me so he life. 
for me because he loved me so till Jesus come and sing his praise and then to glory go and live with him through endless days because he loved me so he loved me so he precious life for us because he loved us so thank you Lord Jesus thank you Father for so loving the world the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son Jesus that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life for God sent not his Son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's St. John chapter 3, 16 and 17. The Bible says to hear, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That we must hear, we must open our ears to hear. The Bible says that no one can come to God except the Father draws him. So, Father, I pray that you would draw people to you. And the simple prayer is this. Say this. Say, Jesus, you are Lord. And I believe that you died on the cross and that you were raised from the dead for my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be the Lord of my life. Draw me to you, Lord. Draw me to you. Reveal yourself to me. I don't know you, but I want to know you. Save me, Jesus. I repent of my sins. I turn from my wicked ways. I turn and I put my trust in you. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me while I was yet a sinner. When I was lost, while we were yet your enemy. We were sinners. You paid a debt for us. You paid a debt for us while we were yet sinners. Thank you. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. That simple prayer, I have prayed it at least a million times. At least a million. And I still pray it. I still ask him into my heart. I, I want God in my heart. I want him in my soul. I want him in my mind. I want him in every part of me. I want to be saturated in his presence. I want to walk with him. I want to know him. I want to please him. I want to put a smile on his face. Because he puts one on my face every day. And I, I want him to know that I love him. And I appreciate him. I want God to know that. God is good to all. He is good to everyone. He is good to all. He is no respecter of persons. <laughs> God is no respecter of persons. I'm so glad that he's no respecter of persons. He loved the rich, the poor, the Jews, the Gentiles. But we have to come the way that he says. Because he's the king. He's God. And we have to do it the way he says. And I'm glad to do it the way he says to do it. I'm glad because he knows more than me. He knows what's best for me. 
because he's the king. He's God. He's self-existence. He knows everything. He owns everything. He's almighty. And I reverence him. I reverence you, Lord God. I reverence you. Thank you, Father. So I just want to say that I'm, I'm looking forward to my future to continue to, to live for the Lord for the rest of my life. And to continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To continue to witness for Him. To continue to tell others about Christ. To pray with others. To pray for others to be healed. Pray for others to be saved. Pray for others to find a job. To be productive. To pray without ceasing. To live for God. I'm sold out for God. I'm sold out. Well, we would like to thank Cynthia Williams for sharing her heart of how much God means to her. And it just is so evident of how much she loves Jesus and wants nothing but to please Him. If you've been listening and you you heard the prayer and maybe you prayed that prayer that she prayed with you for Jesus to come into your life. If you, if you did that, we want to encourage you to find a local church fellowship because it is so important that you get yourself rooted and grounded in God's Word that you get to know this Jesus and that you have that personal relationship with Him. That's just the beginning point of saying that prayer. But now comes, now comes your walk with Him, learning to walk with Him, learning to hear His voice, learning to know when He's speaking to you and leading you and guiding you throughout your life and throughout times of, of struggle. There's going to come times of struggle. In the beginning, it may not seem that way at first because you're so new. You're just a baby in Christ. And Jesus, He's going to, he's going to just wrap His arms around you and He's going to answer your prayers like you've never had them answered before. And then there may come a time, there will come a time, when you have grown. You've grown some and you're becoming more grown up in him and we need to we need to know how to rely on him sometimes even when we when we don't hear when we don't sometimes we don't hear if he's speaking to us and all we have to do all we can do is walk by faith in certain situations to know and just to know by faith and and the word that we have learned how to walk and how how to hear him his word will never fail and it will never come back void we need to plant that word in our hearts we need as Cynthia has done in her life she has she has devoured God's word she lives God's word she walks in it she she walks and talks it she she sleeps God's Word. And, and that's the point where we all are to come to because we're being made in the image of Jesus Christ. We're being made to wit, live and walk as He walked, to talk, to, to reach others, to be a witness to others, to, to live like He lived because that that is really that is really the only way for life and peace in this life is through Jesus Christ so I, I encourage you if you did pray today with Cynthia I encourage you to find a local church, church fellowship where you can begin to grow in God and in his word get yourself get yourself a Bible a good 
Bible that where you can understand, easy translation, where you can understand God's Word and don't, don't leave out prayer. You need to be talking to God every day. Every day begin to develop a prayer life with Him. That's all part of the relationship that we have with Jesus Christ. Walking, talking, and talking is praying to God. Um, and having that local fellowship where we can have the support of other sisters and brothers in Christ when there comes times in our life when sometimes we really need that help and that support. And when we have a church family that we can go to, there's nothing like it. There's just nothing like it. It, it just it feels so good just to know that you have a church family. So I encourage you, don't put that aside. Don't think you can do it on your own because you can't. N none of us can. We can't do it without Jesus and without His, His saints, His people. We are saints. The Bible says that we are saints. We are called according to His purpose. We are saints. We are priests of the Most Holy God. You'll learn that too in the Word as you learn and study God's Word. You'll learn who you are in Christ. That's what you need to be doing. You need to learn who you are in Christ. Because when you do that, your faith will grow. Your, your, um, your confidence your confidence will grow, not only in yourself, but your confidence in who you are in Christ and what you can do. Because the Bible says, for without Christ we are nothing, but we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. I would never, ever believe I could be doing what I am doing right here, right now, what I do even on the side that you don't even know. I never thought I could do. We minister in prisons now, and we have not, we didn't do that for I don't know how many years, but we've been doing it now. I've been in, I've been a Christian now for about 32 years, and we've been doing this, ministering in prisons for a good 15 years, and it is such a joy to see how God can use me how he has changed me and made me who I am. I never thought I would be singing. I don't, I'm not a professional, but I love to sing to the Lord. I love to worship. And I bring songs of worship into the prisons. And that is my way of ministering to the men. We don't minister to women because the Lord hasn't let us in those kinds of prisons. We're only right now going into two state prisons, and it's for men, and it is such a joy and such an awesome opportunity to minister to men like that who, just to bring them hope and encouragement and to bring them the love of Jesus. And I just, you'll, you'll be amazed if you've given your life to Christ and you're, you're just starting out, you'll be amazed of what He will do with you, with your life, as you continue to grow in Him and serve Him. You, you will become a servant. As Cynthia said, she is a servant. And that is, that is part of my life. I am a servant. That, <laughs> that's, there's a song that really ministered to me when I was coming to the Lord. And it, it's all about being a servant. It's a servant of Christ. Doing what He calls us to do. And it's only for one purpose. And that is to help build His kingdom. And to reach others for Him. And to love others for Him. And to give other people hope and encouragement. That's what this is all about. That's what this ministry Precious Testimonies is all about is to bring you, the listener, hope and encouragement to know that it's not too late. No matter what you've gone through, no matter what you're going through, whatever 
situation your life is in right now, whether you have totally turned your back on God, maybe you served Him once or a few times in your lifetime, but you've turned your back, you've gone your own way, you, you thought, well, this isn't working. I'm going to have more fun living this way. People are more caring than sometimes Christians have been to me. And that's sad when that has happened. That's not the way Christians should be. But sometimes that's the impression. Sometimes Christians who are not fully committed in their hearts, fully surrendered to God, but only are giving like lip service and not really doing what God's called them to do. They can be a turn off to people who don't know God and who are searching. They may not know they're searching. You may not know you're searching. But if you're if you are unhappy, if you are unsatisfied with where your life is right now, where it's been going, what you've been doing with your life. There is nothing, nothing that will satisfy you but living your life for Jesus Christ. I challenge you. I challenge you. I even dare you to say, if you didn't pray with Cynthia, I dare you to pray and ask God, God, if you are real, I, I ask you to prove that to me. Prove that to me, Lord. I, I ask you, I dare you, God, to prove that to me because I don't know. I don't know you like Cynthia knows you. I don't know you like this woman knows you. But God, I want your peace. And I want to be happy. I want that joy, and that, that peace. There is so much peace. I have never had as much peace as I have now than when I was not serving God, when I was not living for Him, I lived a life of loneliness. I was so lonely. I went to I went to bars too in my younger years. I went and I went to parties. I went. I drank. I took a few drugs here and there, but I never found the peace that I know now. I have so much peace. I am just so amazed and overwhelmed with the peace of God that's in my heart. And if you want that peace, I encourage you to turn to Jesus because Jesus is the only way to the truth and the life that you can have. And the joy, you will never have it any other way. You may think you have it in the things that you have, the money maybe that you have, or the fame that you've got in your job or whatever you're doing and you're successful there will never be you'll never have that true peace without Jesus Christ in your heart and in your life so I encourage you I encourage you with all my heart to turn to Jesus if you haven't yet already and I thank God I thank God Thank you for listening. I thank God for listening to each and every one of our hearts. And I want to, I want to share too that if there is anyone here that needs more hope and encouragement, we encourage you to contact us somehow. You can contact, contact us by phone, through email, through the internet. You'll see a phone number or you'll see our email address. You may call us for prayer if you want. You may call us for encouragement. But contact us if you need that. If you need a word of encouragement or if you want someone to pray with you. And we do have um, a ministry called Precious Testimonies, which is on our website. It's called www.preciousTestimonies.com. 
and there you will find so much hope and encouragement. You'll find so many testimonies that will encourage you, testimonies from all walks of life, from people who have gone through so many situations, have come out of lifestyles of drugs, alcohol, homosexuality, um, sometimes even religious lifestyles where they thought they had it all, but they didn't because they didn't really know Jesus Christ personally. And that's what it all, where it all begins. You need a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I encourage you to check out our website, www.preciousTestimonies.com And we encourage you to, you know, if, you, if you're watching, listening to this on the internet, just keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus and let Him be in control of your life because it's when we totally surrender. Surrender our hearts and our lives to Him. That's all what it's all about. It's always giving up ourselves so that we may increase. First, we decrease that He increases. We are always decreasing so that He may increase. And when we do that, there is so much more peace. We just can't imagine or fathom what He will do and can do through us. You'll be amazed at how much He has become alive and real to you. So I thank God and I thank you for listening. And we just right now thank you and just say God bless you. Well, I want to thank you who have been watching this broadcast. Perhaps you've tuned in a little late and you're not sure what broadcast this is. It's the Precious Testimonies Evangelistic Ministries broadcast. We're a non-denominational outreach ministry. It's simply giving uh, born-again Christians an opportunity to testify, uh, share what... Uh, Jesus Christ means to them what he's done in their lives. And it's always such a privilege uh, and a blessing to be able to put camera on people like Cynthia Williams. I hope you got a chance to see all of her testimony and what she shared. Um, following Cynthia was my wife, Kathleen. Uh, she was the one on just before me. I'm Norm Rasmussen. I'm the founder of the Precious Testimonies uh, Ministries. And let me just share a little bit more about what we're about. Uh, we have a website, as my wife mentioned, I believe. Uh, it's called uh, PreciousTestimonies.com. You can go do an internet search and type in the word testimonies, and we should be uh, right at the top of the page on page one. Um, or Christian Testimonies, that'll also get you there. But we're called Precious Testimonies. Uh, on our website, we uh, publish printed testimonies. I uh, write articles from time to time to try to help people in their uh, spiritual walk with God, a uh, long life's spiritual journey for people. Um, from time to time, I feel led to uh, post other writings on the website as well. So there's various content on our website. You might want to go there and check that out if you have uh, internet access. It's there to help people, uh, have, give them hope and encouragement, spiritual insight uh, into uh, spiritual issues, spiritual truth. Um, perhaps you would like to inquire about uh, letting us videotape you. We, we tell people this is an opportunity to testify and minister. We, we have ev heavy emphasis on testify because that's primarily what we're called to do. But people have liberty to minister as the Holy Spirit leads. As long as we have peace with what they say, then that's perfectly fine. Uh, we, we play these video broadcasts. We have two-hour broadcasts that we play on various cable TV public access stations. Uh, in Western Michigan, uh, we put all of this, these uh, testimonies that we have peace with. Uh, we put them on the internet, 
and they go out across the world and people can see them anytime they want just by clicking on uh, the appropriate uh, testimony and uh, they can watch it any anytime they want as often as they want on our website every every person that we have uh, done a testimony on whether it be written or video or both we have a directory on the website and people can just look down alphabetically for last name first and click over to the right if they have a written testimony they can read that if they want to watch a video testimony they can do that as well so there's two different formats we're probably gonna also put uh, these testimonies on mp3 format I believe we will because some people aren't always able to watch them but they have opportunity to hear them so we'll also be putting them in mp3 file uh, I don't want to say you know a lot of a lot of Christians assume that we have numerous uh, Christians willing to let us videotape them. That is not the case. It never has been the case. Probably the most difficult aspect of this ministry is trying to get Christians to avail themselves to let us videotape them. Um, overall, probably 99% of the Christians we ask to pray about letting us videotape them decline. And I know there's a lot of fears, there's a lot of concerns as to why that is, but uh, we, we, we're cyber evangelists, my wife and I, and uh, we believe that holding our testimony to ourselves and not giving it to God to use as He wills um, doesn't always sit well with God. We are to be called witnesses. We born again Christians are to be called witness. We are witnesses. We're supposed to be witnesses. And we're supposed to be eagerly uh, uh, walking with the Holy Spirit in how we might be more effective witnesses. God has given us the internet, video. He's given doors open to, to the body of Christ to fulfill the Great Commission. And uh, testimonies is definitely something God uses uh, to uh, get uh, the unsaved to listen to. So make it a serious priority. Uh, to uh, see if God would have you uh, let us videotape you. Now there's a phone number there at the bottom of your screen you can call, but that's a secondary way of getting hold of us. If you have internet access, go to our website. Our email address is right there on the front page, the first page you'll, you'll click on to. And uh, go down to the bottom, and we, we prefer that people would email us. Uh, and we we dialogue communicate through email because our phone rings nonstop off the hook and we we just my wife and I just don't have the time to sit and respond to phone calls uh, in a timely fashion so sometimes it's two three days four or five days before we can even get to phone messages so we, we wish it wasn't that way but this ministry is is continues to expand and uh, there's only so much time to uh, do all the things that we feel called to do.